Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. Clip Studio 2 just came out, and it came out with a couple new features that I want to compare to Rebel 6 Pro. Now, Clip Studio 2 has a color mixing property called Perceptual, and Rebel 6 Pro has a color mixing property called Pigments. So I wanted to compare the two, kind of talk about what things are similar, what things are different, let you decide which one is best, then tell you what's best, and then laugh about it smugly. So after I do that, I also want to compare the liquify tool that is in Clip Studio Paint 2.0 and the liquify tool using the Fractal Engine inside of Rebel 6 Pro. Now, I like Clip Studio Pro. Version 2 is even better, obviously, than version 1, and Rebel 6 Pro is a fantastic program. I would recommend Clip Studio Paint if you're doing illustration, anime, manga style art, line work, uh, stuff like that. And if you're trying to do natural media emulation, then uh, Rebel 6 Pro is fantastic. So that's my just quick disclaimer here in the beginning. So if you're looking for one or the other, that's where I'm going. Let's go ahead and look at these new features and how they stack up against each other. Okay, so let's start inside of Clip Studio Pro. 2.0. This is not EX, and unless you're really making comic books or doing something like that, Clip Studio Paint Pro versus EX Pro is probably going to be what you want, and it's a great price right now. So we're inside of the ink tools. I'm going to open this up so you can see we're inside of the oil painting tools. We're using oil paint flat brush. If you go to window, sub tool detail, you can choose inside of ink, perceptual, this is what you want to turn on in order to see this new mixing mode. Now I have this set to blend instead of running color or smear and down here brightness correction is set to off. Okay, So let's close that and hide this panel. Over here in Rebel 6 Pro we have pigments turned on, use color pigments and one thing I'll point out quickly, I really love that you can actually see the pigment names just like a traditional painter. If you're coming from traditional painting, then being able to pick an Indian red or a raw umber or burnt sienna, this is fantastic. You're not having to relearn a lot of the things that you learned in your schooling or training. Okay, so let's look at these colors and how they mix. Now, a quick note over here on the left side, I'm using the Tablet Pro Artist Pad you can get this at tabletpro.com. It works for Clip Studio Paint. If you're using a stylus and touch and windows, then this is a really great tool to make drawing and painting feel a lot more natural and effective and efficient. I've tried my best to make sure these colors are exactly the same. So let's go ahead and get started with the mixing. All right, so let's start over here and mix the red and yellow. Again, we have the paint amount set to nothing. You can see we get a really nice orange color. And actually I think I want to change this to a different brush for this. I really like this gouache. We can choose perceptual for it, so that's good. Amount of paint, let's put this down. This is in Kyle's brushes, a uh, Photoshop brush, but it'll give you the same idea. Kind of the best, the best we can see. Let's just go ahead and mix the red and yellow together over here. And let's make sure that we are in a mixing mode. You can see those same beautiful orange colors that we're seeing in Clip Studio Paint. Let's go back over here and mix yellow and blue and see what we get. We get some very nice spring greens and blue greens. It's very pretty. Go 
good enough. Over here in Rebel, getting that same thing. Some beautiful blue greens. Very nice spectrum in between the two. Now let's go to red and blue. Red and blue. This is where you can really see the difference between the pigments in Rebel and the perceptual color mixing inside of Clip Studio Paint 2.0. So blue and yellow really mix nicely. Red and yellow really mix nicely. But here, the red and blue doesn't look like they have quite figured that out. So if you're trying to get natural color mixing and you want it to be spot on with what you see in real life, then the pigments inside of Rebel 6 Pro are, in my opinion, they are superior to that inside of Clip Studio Paint 2.0. Now, still very good improvements with Clip Studio Paint 2.0. Again, I think you should own both programs. If you're buying both programs, please use the links in the description. I have affiliate links to um, most of the programs that you'll see on this channel. So please use those links that'll help support me and my family in this channel. And thank you for doing that if you do that. All right, let's go ahead and look at the liquify tool. Now liquify tool, that is right here. This is actually, uh, it can be two tools. Two tools. So here the option is blend, which is what you'll probably see first tab over to liquify and now you can see what we're dealing with. Let's go ahead and bring this brush up to um, 92 and let's hide this extra information. So let's do the same thing over in Rebel. We're going to pick the liquify tool. Let's just look at what that looks like. Here liquify tool is right here smudge and liquify. Here, Smudge is very different than Liquify. We want Liquify Push. We want Soft right here. Let's go ahead and hide that. And let's zoom in here. Now, if we... Let's bring the size up quite a bit. If we push here, we can see that we still have the texture that was there from before we did the liquify action. Over here, you can see very similar. Now they're different. So inside Eclipse Studio, there's not that nano pixel technology. So you're gonna see very pixelated as you zoom in. Here you're gonna see um, the grain of the canvas, the, the texture and the fabric put some little eyelashes on our little green valley. So we're going to go here uh, and let's look again. We're going to use Pentel and let's make some little black eyelashes. And we're going to use Liquify on these. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. We're going to pick a pencil, a dark pencil. Let's choose black. Let's go back to liquify and hide this panel. Here, same thing. Here I'm using the liquify tool, making these shorter. Decrease the size here and really refine this. So what we're looking for and what you should be looking for in a liquify tool is we don't want these lines to degrade. So we want them to be able to uh, keep their fidelity 
so they don't look um, like they have been modified. They look like the same type of line as we started with. So it doesn't end up being something that we have to redo if we decide to do something different. Now here I can bring this back to uh, similar to how we started and the lines look for the most part very similar to the lines we started with even after playing with them quite a bit. This is a very good indication that we could use this uh, on a uh, piece of artwork without destroying it. Now let's go ahead and bring this size up and you can see even if we push this we're keeping that again that fidelity that texture this is very very nice very usable. All right, let's go ahead and go over here and let's bring this size up on the brush I think this is the largest we can do right now. Okay, let's bring this down. Now, do know that this is very fast. Let's bring it up. Bring push size down a little bit. Let's try to nudge this uh, crooked and then straight. We'll do the same thing over here. And note that there is a number of different uh, options here. Okay, so let's zoom in and try and correct this. And so here you can see what I was talking about before. This has become a largely unusable line. You would need to go back in and uh, correct this, redo it in order for it to be something you could use in a finished art piece. Let's push this over. You could argue that this is all way too small, but the point remains it's a little, in my opinion, uh, inferior to what's inside of Rebel. Okay, so you can see that line here. Over here we have the same quality of line. Again, we can squish this. Bringing this down. And bringing it back up pushing it in and really refining the line shape. So let's go ahead and let's do, let's make a bent line and then bring it back and see if it looks similar to how it did before. I think it looks I think it looks pretty good. Now one of the other features of the liquify tool inside of Clip Studio Paint 2 is you can do multiple layers at the same time. Okay, so we have two layers over here. Let's duplicate this one right here and let's offset it here as well. The trick to doing this inside of Clip Studio Paint 2.0 is that you select both layers at the same time and then you use the liquify tool. So as you can see that we were able to do that, let's go ahead and make this tool bigger again. Mm, too big. So now you can see we can do liquify on multiple layers at the same time, which is very cool. All right, let's go back over here and let's see if we can do that same thing. Multiple layers. And that is not an option 
inside of Rebel 6 Pro. So if you want to liquefy multiple layers at the same time, then you may have to do that inside Eclipse Studio Paint 2.0 or merge layers inside of Rebel 6 Pro. I do like this option right here. There's a liquefy reconstruct. It's pretty brilliant. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. If you do digital art on a Windows tablet, this is a great channel for you, so please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay creative and have a wonderful day.